Many people grow up loving classic Disney movies. They are thought to inspire children and teach moral values at very early ages. They become rooted in childhood memories and create the foundations of children's aspirations. This is known as projective identification, a psychoanalytic concept used by the French theorist Jean-Louis Baudry to analyze spectatorship within cinema. Projective identification in films is especially noticeable in children who crave empowerment and become attached to certain characters and their stories. But what happens when some children can't derive the same inspiration and identification from these movies as other children? According to African-American film theorist Manthea Diawara, classical Hollywood empowers only the viewers who are able to align themselves with the position of the white protagonists. In the case of Disney movies, the protagonists are almost exclusively white male princes or beautiful white princesses. With Diawara's reasoning, a non-white child would struggle to identify with the protagonist. As a result, the child would not be able to gain the same inspiration and empowerment as a white child watching the same films. At first glance when watching Disney movies, viewers are engulfed in the beauty of the animation, fantastical nature of the stories, and classic Disney happy endings. But upon closer inspection, the inherent racism of classic Disney movies becomes apparent. One example of a Disney film that encompasses hidden racism is Dumbo, which is the story of the adventures of an elephant who uses his ears to fly. In the song When I See an Elephant Fly, viewers are introduced to the crows, who act as father figures and encourage Dumbo to keep trying to fly after he loses his ability. Their dark color and southern vernacular represents the stereotype of uneducated black southerners. At first, this song appears to be lighthearted and catchy. However, the racism manifests itself through the crow's dialect. Hey, I've seen all that too. I've seen a peanut stand and heard a rubber band. I've seen a needle that winked its eye. One of the crows in the scene is named Jim the Crow. This choice by Disney is a clear reference to the Jim Crow laws of the 1960s, which allowed for legal segregation and discrimination in the South. As Diawara would argue, the black spectators are not privileged to the same viewing experience as the white spectators while watching Dumbo due to the inferior portrayal of their race. Another Disney film that has racist undertones is the 1953 film Peter Pan. Peter Pan features a scene in which the Lost Boys go on a hunt for Indians. The Lost Boys are a group of young boys who live with Peter Pan in Neverland. They live without parents and can do whatever they want, usually with the encouragement of Peter. In one scene, they are instructed by Peter to go on a hunt for Indians. Go out and capture a few Indians. When the leader of the Lost Boys describes the Indians, he stereotypically characterizes them as dangerous. Blackfoot tribe belongs to the Algonquin. Quite savage, you know. Let's go get them. Instead of capturing the Indians, however, the Lost Boys are instead caught by the Indians. When the Indians attack the Lost Boys, the scene creates an image of ferocious savagery associated with the Native Americans. In the next scene, the Indians are portrayed as bright red humans. The film turns the history and skin color of Native Americans into a joke through the lyrics. Let's go back a million years to the very first Indian prince. He kissed some maid and started to blush and love and blush and sing. In the Disney films, there is a tendency to capture the racial inferiority through the point of view or gaze of the white characters. In this scene, the Indians are observed solely from the perspective of the white Lost Boys. Diawara refers to this as the racialized gaze, which creates a white versus other or good versus bad narrative. In doing so, the non-white spectator or any resisting spectator experiences discomfort while trying to identify with the white or good gaze through narcissistic identification. Next, the Indian chiefs hand one of the children a traditional Indian pipe. When the children pass the pipe around, one of the boys gets sick, symbolizing how Native American culture has harmed him. According to African American film theorist James Sneed, these racialized stereotypes in movies only work to perpetuate the racist portrayal of characters in future movies. This is especially important in a children's movie where the viewers are impressionable and more likely to believe these racist viewpoints. You now, little flying eagle. 
Dumbo and Peter Pan reveal the racist nature of Disney films. However, Disney has recently started a movement towards racial inclusivity with some of their new princess films, including the 2009 film The Princess and the Frog, featuring African-American princess Tiana, and the 2016 film Moana, featuring a Pacific Islander princess. It was Moana, right? Yes, and you will restore the heart! Disney's recent shift towards diversity suggests that they recognize that their past movies have included racist characters that might make it hard for non-white children to enjoy and identify with their films. Hopefully, Disney's recent shift will make it easier for all children to identify with their films. <laughs>